welcome to Street Creds, the place where we take games that have recently come out and find out what makes them tick. We take a look at the good, the bad, and then decide how many credits we think the game deserves out of a max score of 100 credits. Today's pick is going to be the Callisto Protocol. The game came out on December 2nd, 2022. It was created with Unreal Engine 5 and is available on all PlayStation platforms, Xbox platforms, and on PC. The game is developed by Striking Distance Studios and published by Crafton. The story of the game takes place around 300 years in the future on Jupiter's moon Callisto. As the former space truck driver Jacob Lee, now accidental convict, you have to escape a black iron prison by surviving the horrors of mutated inmates that are ready to rip you apart. The game takes a lot of inspiration from Dead Space. Since it has some of the people that have worked on Dead Space, it makes sense that this game will be influenced by it, which is a good starting place as Dead Space was a fantastic game, both the first and the second game, with the third one having a bit of a rough time in showing what it can do. The combat is focused on both melee combat and ranged weapons. The baton is a nice take on a melee weapon that I put a lot of focus on upgrading first. In terms of long range weapons, you have shotguns, you have an AR, and a couple of pistols which you can individually upgrade to your liking. At higher levels, there is even a secondary fire that you can unlock. You also get to find a gravity control glove, which you can use to grab things lying around and even enemies. The upgrades for this are pretty standard. Uh, you can upgrade the recovery speed, the capacity of the batteries and the throw power, which basically means the more power to throw you have, the higher the damage done to the enemy. Back to the baton. It is a fun way to make your way through the narrow and claustrophobic claustrophobic walls of black iron. The animations for pulling it out gives you a real sense of relief and power. But once the fighting starts, you get locked into these super up close one on one fights with creatures. It works well in some scenarios, making you feel very involved in the action, but it does not work at all as soon as there are two or god forbid more than two enemies. Slow movement, unable to see behind you because of the lock in mechanic, you have absolutely no clue what is happening around you. Despite all of this, I think it's a good idea and it was sort of fun until you reach the 3-4 hours mark. The annoying part came as you progress through the game. I spent everything to upgrade the baton as soon as possible, but there is one specific moment in the game which I will not spoil, but the baton after that becomes utterly useless. There are too many enemies, the boss fights do not allow you to do too much to them with it and you are forced into switching on Rambo mode, all guns blazing mode. The ranged weapons, the guns, have a generic feeling to them in my opinion. Bullets, recoil, effects are all the same with every weapon. Sure, there's secondary fire which provides some alternatives, but it is not something with a big impact. I don't think it's even fair to start comparing them to the guns you had available in Dead Space. Dead Space, first of all, had tools, construction tools as weapons. So think about that. Now, that does not mean that they don't do their job. You can definitely kill uh, a lot of enemies with them and it's still fun to play, but I think there's just not enough depth in there to make it worthwhile. In the graphics department, the Callisto Protocol is one hell of a game. The design, the blend between realism and fiction is nicely done making you feel like this might be something that could actually happen. I think the actors did a very good job with their roles portraying the characters pretty accurately as to what you would expect people to behave like in those situations. This combined with level design works wonders when it comes to moving through tight narrow spaces. It gives you a sense of claustrophobia and constant fear. A fear that if something pops up and attacks you, you do not have a lot of wiggle room to run away. You have to fight the terror. In terms of level design, I enjoyed some of the scarce environmental opportunities you had at your disposal. For example, the car wash tumblers where you could push uh, the enemies into them and just explode in a pile of blood and gore. That was a neat way to introduce some creative kills besides the overused spike walls which were, oh my god, all over the place. I get it, it's a prison with dangerous individuals, but should every wall be a death trap? Some variety in this sense would have been more than welcome. Speaking of variety, for my taste in hell-infused biomutants, I would have liked to see a more diverse cast. We have the usual roamers, the roamers that get a buff if you get them too angry, the clickers, which are super not aware of what is happening. They should have been a bit more sensitive to some other elements, or maybe have a better pathing when roaming. Almost every fight with them was because I was looking for one. There was not much of a challenge. In terms of bosses, well, there aren't any. There is a mini boss 
that repeats at least three times if I remember correctly. And that's about it. You have one silly final boss and that's that. Of course, with the same issue, there is only one way to fight him, which is with ranged weapons. I think they could have at least introduced some stun status where you had to whack him with the baton to make the combat a bit more diverse. Now, one of the overall issues with the game and the reason why it got a huge amount of negative reviews, especially on Steam on release, is the poor performance that the game had. With constant stuttering, frame drops, random crashes, and some even reporting voice desyncs. Me, personally, I can't say that I've had insanely bad performance. The game ran smoothly while I was streaming and recording it at the same time. There were some occasional stutters and frame drops when a new area had to be loaded, well, basically at every turn of a corner. I had found a corridor where I think the devs even forgot to add sound effects all the way to the end of it. Oh, what's that? Oh, it's just a shadow. Oh my god. This ghost? Nothing? Where's the sound? Hello? Sound? Yeah. I'm confused. I'm confused too. <laughs> okay, the sound does not reach further than this. Oop. Yeah, the sound cuts off right here. Do we have a map? No. Oh, I guess there's something right here where the music stops. Boom. There we go. Back to the immersion. But, but, but. Wait, what? Stops here too. Ah, oh, come on. Okay, back. The biggest one that happened, it was during the day one gameplay before the patch, which made my entire PC crash. All in all, I can say that the gaming experience was more than enjoyable, even with the somewhat slow and clunky combat. The game is being uplifted by an awesome atmosphere with some horror moments sprinkled here and there to keep your heartbeat going. With good visuals and well done acting, the game manages to get the story going. My story gameplay time was about 14 hours, where I took my time to explore the world and bash my head on fighting against the combat system to use the tools that I want to use. Taking out my credits, I would give this spooky mutant horror a solid 55 credits. If the combat system would have been even a bit more thought out and diverse, this would have easily been an 80-ish credits for me. But since this plays such a huge role in the game, I think it should also be reflected on the credits balance. Now is your time to put your thoughts on the line. Let me know in the comments below what you think about the game. Like it or hate it. Let me know. Remember to like and subscribe. Rebokun out. See you in the next one. <laughs>